every single story The passion and the glory Just trying to make it through the day You know we're trying to come together Arm and arm and hand in hand And with my brother I will fight to unify our land America Home of the brave We stand strong When we're willing to change And I will watch the feet of freedom And bow down on my knees Praying for a healing Fighting for the freedom Of my brother and me And on the other hand There are those who would undo us But really who would rule us And break us all apart And I will stand beside you And fight against injustice And lawless ones among us Come on, let freedom reign America Home of the brave We stand strong Guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry He pluribus us soon Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry He pluribus us soon Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry Robertson from Duck Dynasty and Duck Commander. I want to tell you about a great book called War on Fear from my good buddy, John Morgan. Of course, he looks like George W. Bush who had the famous War on Terror, so I immediately knew, you know, there was a nice uh, a bit of wordplay there. This book is fantastic. I think it speaks to sort of that natural fear that all of us have, whether it's public speaking or whether it's the first time you get asked to do something you've never done before, uh, up to, you know, the fear of, of loss of life, of, of a sick uh, person in your family, all the things that, that we face every single day. I recommend this highly. I promise you will be blessed when you read this book. And it's the sort of book that after you read it, you're going to want to pass that on to someone else, which to me are the best kind of books. So War on Fear, get yours as soon as you can. Gator! 
I was just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Hey, Mark. I got two marks on my show today. Somebody needs to mark that. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you guys. Welcome to the John Morgan Show. Humor, passion, and perspective in the midst of a weird, weird world. But the good news is always the good news. No matter who's president. Do you see those presidents, all them, just then? How come Donald Trump wasn't in that picture? And Twitty. Praying for our president now as he approaches the Supreme Court with recount vote options. May righteousness prevail and may he be humble. I couldn't agree more. Oh, yeah. Red, white, and blues. I wish I had a better voice. Ooh. Welcome, everybody, to the John Morgan Show. I am your host, John Morgan. <laughs> that always surprises me when those people clap for me. I never know where they are. They just do that, and it's just so weird and freaky and fun. Oh, man. You know, here we are in the middle of a war between two candidates. Joe Biden has has declared himself to be the winner. Well, he didn't declare himself to be the winner. I think he was surprised by the fact that all the news media outlets declared him to be the winner, which is typically what happens, okay? There are folks who are saying, that's not their job, but they do that, and that's tradition in America. The news media outlets project the winner, and they have projected Joe Biden to be the winner in the presidential election. However, nobody has certified the vote. Nobody has definitively said that he is the winner. He has declared himself to be the winner, and all of his cohorts in the media are, of course, taking part in the biggest parade ever to support his declaration. Of course, no one is giving President Trump much support because he himself also declared himself to be the winner. Now, granted, he has not achieved 270 electoral votes in the uh, electoral thingy that they're working on. Uh, and so, you know, it, 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 it's, it's looking grim and slim for the president, but he is not out. And as everybody knows, every Rocky picture, every movie has its drama, and the 2020 election in the United States of America is not without its drama. George W. Bush had his drama in the year 2000. You may recall, he was elected, he was declared, it was in the front page of the paper. Al Gore called him and said, well, Mr. President, I'd like to concede to you and say, looks like you beat the pants off me and you win, so whoop de doo do And then called back some moments later and said, I would like to rescind my concession. And W said, what the hell do you mean you'd like to rescind your concession? <laughs> he probably said, I'd like to rescind. What do you mean? What the hell do you mean you want to rescindify your confession? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> That's right. Hillary conceded with grace. Yes, she did, because the win was so overwhelming. And in the end, if George, if uh, excuse me, if President, thank you, Mark. That's a very good point. And if President Bush doesn't win after he does everything he can, to expose what he believes and I believe to be big time irregular irregularities in the voting, which could change the outcome in the election, which is his due diligence and his right as an American, as a candidate, and as somebody who believes in doing what's right, that is his absolute right. And if you would disagree with that, you're wrong. <laughs> it's simple and plain. So he should not concede. He should fight to the bitter end. And when it's over, if he loses, he will gracefully concede. However, I do believe with all my heart that he will not lose. 
I believe that President Donald J. Trump was elected to be the 45th president of the United States for four more years, and I will stand on that belief until... The, hey, the, you know what? The fat lady's going to sing for somebody. I believe it's going to be for Donald J. And I wouldn't even be surprised if it isn't Rosie O'Donnell invited personally and directly by the president and giving her a big fat kiss on the cheek at the end of it. Because I believe that Donald Trump is meant to be, is supposed to be, is divinely uh, called to be our president for four more years. So that's just what I believe. Hey, guess what? I'm allowed to believe what I believe. You know, I heard uh, <laughs> I heard that um, Vice President supposed elect Kamala Harris Kamala Harris came out today in favor of, and I, th- allegedly, I did not hear it myself, I just heard a rumor that she came out today in favor of nationwide prostitution. Wow, that'll be fun. Can you imagine the, where, th- so can you imagine the Rock Hill, downhill slide avalanche of corruption and evil? I mean, it starts with world with uh, nationwide prostitution, and where does it end? Hopefully, that is wrong. I hope I was completely wrong on that. Lord, help us if that's the case. I mean, of course, we're going to have um, abortion from uh, conception until uh, about, what, two weeks after birth? I don't know what it is. Somewhere in there. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so anyway, congratulations, Mark. Am I crazy? Am I crazy? Maybe I am. I heard that. It was just a rumor, probably no truth to it. So it's just alleged. And uh, But look it up. My wife was uh, listening to uh, Kamala Harris speak, and uh, apparently she was saying it. So I, I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to check that out. Her own words, 100% true. Spreading lies again, Mark, okay? I did not say it was true. I said I heard that it was true. I did not say it was 100% factual. I heard it. And so folks on the on the show that did hear it are are coming in saying, yes, 100% true. So check it out, Mark. Check it out yourself. And so I, I had a funny thing happen to me when I was in high school, okay? Um, I had a nemesis back in high school. So why report a rumor? Okay, fair enough. Well, because my wife said it, and I tend to b- believe her. And plus, she was listening to Kamala at the moment. And so, it, to my wife, it wasn't a rumor. To me, it was a rumor because I didn't actually hear Kamala say it. But she was listening. I heard Kamala's voice. Uh, and so, you know, check it out. We'll see. Anyway, so I had something happen to me in high school that I thought uh, applied to where we are in a, as a nation. I had a nemesis in high school, and um, people laugh when I say he was a nemesis because, frankly, I, you know, I was not a fighter. I was a peacemaker. I I was always a make up and let's smoke a joint and go away and, and be happy. I never wanted to fight. The, the few fights I got into in school were forced on me, and I did it just to protect my honor, I guess. I don't know. And I walked away from them as soon as I could because I never was angry. I I just, I'm a very even keeled person and I don't get angry easily. Uh, Daniel, my son, who's on here today making comments, will attest to that. Here he just said, lots of peeps are pro-legalizing sex work. Ooh, sex work, called sex work. It's already happening. So make it safe and clean. Oh, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Oh, Daniel, we need to talk, my son. It's okay. He's my son, and uh, we'll work through these things. <laughs> um, so I had a nemesis. I won't name him, but his name was David. And uh, one day, we were pitching quarters in the men's locker room or outside the gym, and, um, and, and the idea is you both pitch a quarter, and whoever gets the quarter closest to the wall gets both quarters. So we both pitched a quarter. My cl- my quarter was closer. Obviously, he wanted to pitch a fight, so he went over and picked up both quarters and put them in my put them in his pocket like a blatant, you know. That's not how you play the game. That's bad form, bad sportsmanship. You know, it's like in your face. What are you going to do about it? That kind of a thing. So I said, "Give me back the quarter," and uh, and I said, "Give me back the quarter right now." 
And uh, he said, what are you going to do about it? He got up in my face. <laughs> so we were pushing each other against the lockers, and it turned into a fight. And uh, oh, now I haven't relived this. I'm telling you, I haven't relived this fight in decades, decades. But in, when I was a younger man, I relived this fight so many times because I regretted having given up before I soundly beat the guy. I was beating him. I landed good punches. And then his glasses flew off his face. And he stopped fighting and he said, oh, I need my glasses. Well, you know, I could have casually walked over and kicked his glasses into the shower or accidentally stepped on them and broke them. I mean, but honestly, I didn't do any of those things. I picked up his glasses because what I saw was an opportunity to stop the fight, to appease my nemesis, to try to make friends. Because to me, I'm a peacemaker. I'm a friend maker. I'm a lover, not a hater. Okay. So I gave him his glasses and he said, you touch me again, I'll use jujitsu on your ass. And so that was it. That was the end of the fight. And he kept my quarter. He kept my quarter. Oh, I regretted that. So here we are. President Trump has an opportunity to write what he believes, and I believe, is a wrong. And I am so glad that those on the left who believe in fairness are giving President Trump his opportunity to do that. He is documenting vote voter fraud, what you know, alleged voter fraud, voting irregularities, and taking them to the courts, which is his legal right, and frankly, it is his due diligence. It is, look, he has fought hard for this country for four years. He's made tremendous gains. He has brought record low unemployment in the African-American community, record low, record. We're talking the 240-year history of this country. He has broken every record for unemployment in the Hispanic community. He has uh, brought the stock market to so many records. I mean, he broke the record for record-breaking. He, he's been a phenomenal. I know some of you, you, you know, you've got your opinion bias or whatever they call that thing. Um, so you can't hear me when I say anything good about President Trump, but you need to listen. The man has done tremendously good for this country. He's done so much to actually bridge the gap between the African-American community and the white community. He's brought so many people together. He's listened. People come and meet with him. He comes up, he, he listens to their ideas, and he implements them. The opportunity zones, the uh, warp speed, on, and, and, he's, and he, they just announced today they're about to come out with the vaccine as he promised. Of course, y'all won't hear that, right? And even the governor, Cuomo, I think it was, said, oh, it's too bad Don, Donald Trump will be in charge of how they how they distribute it. Well, they can't give him... I mean, he's done so many good things long. Look, the list is this long. I could read it all, but I don't have time. You read it and give the man credit for what he has accomplished. He has worked night and day. I have heard multiple people say that he's the hardest working man they've ever met. And his sole focus is what can I do for the American people? He's not, he's not selfish. He's not, uh, okay, he is an egotistical. <laughs> I'll give you that. Um, but he's done good. He's done. He's done great. Yeah. De, yeah. Mark, decriminalization. Oh, it's different than legalization. I see. I see. So, is that what they did with Antifa when they stopped the police from? arresting people who were burning down other people's buildings, burning down other people's businesses, when they were shooting police officers on the street, when they were um, looting 
Walmarts and, and Targets when they were just stealing everything. And the, and the mayors of these democratic cities were telling the police, watch, but do not intervene. When they were allowing these people to commit crimes, I guess that's decriminalization. That's different from legalization. Although I don't know how. Please spell that out for me, if you will. Don't get it. Don't get it. That's another lie? Oh, really? Oh, so the police... Wait, I don't know. I think the police were told to stand by and just watch. For the most part, they were disallowed by the liberal mayors in these democratic cities from, from stopping people from committing crimes. And, and if they were arrested, of course, the liberal district attorneys just turned them loose. Now, these are all the things that I've read on conservative websites and listened to conservative commentators. I will not say that all the things I just stated are absolute fact because I'm just a guy in a microphone having a talk show repeating what I've heard from other uh, conservative commentators. And if any of it's a lie, if any of it's wrong, I will rescind it. Show me where it's, where it's not true, where that hasn't actually happened, and I will rescind every bit of it. I don't, I don't want to tick you off, Mark, but these are the things that I have heard. Antifa is a lie. Oh, that's right, Mark. Yes, they don't even exist. They're nothing but an idea. Well, then who has been doing all the looting and burning and pillaging and shooting and stabbing? Who is it? They, they seem to call themselves Antifa. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, none of that matters. What matters is President Trump is still hard at it. And I should have continued to insist on what was rightfully mine back in high school. And I pray that President Trump won't give up until the last Supreme Court justice has ruled either in his favor or against him. Not a vote has been certified yet, but boy, Joe Biden and his group are sure celebrating as though it's already done. Now, to be fair, George W. Bush did the same thing in 2000 during all of the um, during all of the recounts and recounts and recounts and lawyers down in in uh, South Florida. George Bush was assembling his team. So I have no fault for Joe Biden presuming that he is the winner of the election. Why wouldn't he? Um, but something funny happened uh, today, and I, I wanted to share it with you. Um, and I'm just going to read uh, from an article out of The Blaze. Y'all probably think that everything Glenn Beck says is a lie from the pit of hell. But he had a funny story, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, it has to do with um, when Joe Biden declared himself to be president-elect or responded as though he were the president-elect. Um, there were fireworks going off in England and church bells tolling in other parts of, the, of, of Italy. And, and everybody just assumed that it was all for president-elect, quote, unquote, Biden. And it's just a funny so story about that. Social media users reading now from The Blaze. Social media users from the United Kingdom roasted American news outlets like ABC News and CNN over the weekend for assuming that fireworks celebrating Guy Fox night or bonfire night were actually in response to the news of former Vice President Joe Biden's reported win over incumbent President Donald Trump. As highlighted by Newsbusters, the Daily Mail reported that ABC News wrote in a since-deleted tweet, fireworks lit up the night sky over London, England, after Joe Biden was characterized to be the apparent winner of the presidential election. Well, what I think is funny about that is that, let me get to the part where it talks about what Guy Fox Night actually is. According to the outlet, every year on Bonfire Night, Guy Fox Night, families across the UK gather outside on November 5th to enjoy fireworks displays commemorating the failed gunpowder plot of 1605, a, pro a plot that was formed by Catholic zealots to blow up the parliament in order to assassinate King James I and overthrow 
Protestant rule. So I, I'm not missing the irony here that people were taking credit for those fireworks and President Trump is feeling as though there is a plot to overtake a presidentially won election by voter fraud and by overcounting and undercounting and all the things that he's accusing uh, the left of doing. And it's just funny. I think it's funny. It's ironic. Now, here's, here's, okay, I shared all that and it was fun. I have this to say. God is in control. God is in control. He created the world and he created you and me. He loves us. He died to set us free. He shed his blood as a sacrifice to ransom us from hell and the grave. And if you accept him as your Lord, you will live eternally. And those are the things that really matter. Those are the things that will transcend this election. You all know what I believe. But the bottom line is, no matter who winds up as president for the next four years, no matter if they decriminalize prostitution and drugs and everything else, no matter what happens to our society and unborn babies, Jesus will still be Lord. Now, frankly, I believe that God, President Trump will continue to serve that he will drain the swamp, that this worldwide coup will be thwarted, and that freedom will continue to reign in America. Now, you, my friends on the left, you don't believe that there is a worldwide coup going on, but there is. This I believe with all my heart. There is a global initiative to run the world uh, using the health crisis as a uh, presupposition or as a context to control everyone. And uh, I believe that President Trump is going to be God's answer to help believe, help keep that away. Mark, Okay, that was 500 votes in Florida in 2,000 totally different. Please tell me what state Trump is close by 500 votes. Please. What state? You know what? I couldn't tell you because I don't know. But none of that, none of that thwarts his right to contest. Right? Don't you agree with that? Does he not have the right to contest the election? If he doesn't have any evidence, he won't succeed. And that'll be that. So let's just, let's just let it play out. But in the meantime, I would like to ask all of my listeners, all of my followers on the left and the right, to pray simply this. God's will be done. Lord, may your kingdom come. May your will be done be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the Bible also admonishes us to, not admonishes, but encourages us to pray for our leaders. So Lord, yes, we do pray for President Trump. And we pray, dear God, that you would help him to do what you want him to do. I don't presume to know what you want him to do, but I know that you do. So I pray that you would move upon his heart move upon his mind, move upon his inclination to do your will, to do the right thing as you see it, Lord. And I pray, dear God, that you will expose unrighteousness wherever it is, wherever it exists. If it's in Trump's camp, expose it. If it's in Biden's camp, 
expose it. Lord, bring to light corruption and irregularity wherever it exists, Lord, we pray. And we give you honor and glory because we believe that our prayers are effective and that they will make a difference. Hallelujah. Folks, I have heard people say, go ahead and celebrate. Donald Trump is still the president. God bless you. It feels like a Friday to me. I'm just going to say it. Instead of TGIM, I'm going with TGIF. Thank God it's finally... Ah, I didn't prepare well. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Thank God it's finished. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Well, to those of you that got all hot and bothered by my comments today, I uh, I had to say what was on my heart, and 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 uh, it's it's my joy to do it. These are my opinions. These are my beliefs, and... Uh, I hope that you will take the things that I've said and, and really listen because oh, confirmation bias, my friend Alan Fry told me. Yes, Sandy, I appreciate you on here on the show. Your husband, Alan, is a precious, dear friend of mine. And he reminded me of the, such a thing as confirmation bias. Those of you on the left, you can't give Donald Trump credit for anything, can you? Or can you? Can you? Maybe you can. Daniel Morgan, yes, I couldn't agree more. Time to unify. Hallelujah. Yes, and I couldn't agree more, Daniel. Thank God this awful election season is over. And as soon as we get all the uh, stuff out and the decision is made, we can get on with life. I just hope that when it's all done and President Trump is declared the winner, that Joe Biden will graciously concede. (laughs) God bless you all. Have an awesome day. Keep believing. Keep the faith. Keep your heart strong. Don't give up. Don't give up on the president. Come on. We're all in this together. It's still Trump 2020, brother. All right. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Let's roll. Well, I'm the good news instigator. So fun. Compassionate conversator. You rock. This freedom is rocking and rolling on after you. Wow, look at all the likes and loves. You guys are crazy. Well, do me a favor. Share this broadcast with all of your friends. Let's build this audience. I love you. I appreciate you. This has been so much fun. And don't forget, pick up the book War on Fear on audible.com, read by the author, or you can get it at waronfearbook.com, autographed by the author. Amen, Marcus. I love you with all my heart, brother. Thank you, Julie. You're very kind. Julie says, God bless you to me and to you. God bless you. God bless you all. Oh, a prayer. Let's all pray it together, and I mean that. God of grace, help us to show compassion to our sisters and brethren, even when they don't deserve it. I agree 100%. We pray in the name of the one who shows compassion to us. Amen. Mark, thank you so much for that beautiful prayer. God bless you all, and thanks for tuning in to the John Morgan Show. Me and the president say, night, night. (laughs) 